What's going on guys, Justin Fuller here. Today I'm gonna to be going over the 2023 Honda Accord Sport Hybrid. A little bit different from the 2022. So today we're gonna to go over those differences and of course, how does this car stack up against all the competition? So let's hop on in. So let's start with what's underneath the hood. So I'll pull you on in. So what you are looking at is a two litered engine, right? So it's a hybrid setup putting out a 204 horsepower. So you can see that you've got some good spacing here, working around, you can get your batteries terminal nice and easy. You've got uh, your, your switches, or excuse me, your fuse box sitting right here. And then all your fluids are easy to access, right? I can get to oil, I can get to reservoirs. Everything is very easy to access underneath the hood of this Honda Accord. Now, while I said this puts out 204 horsepower, I want you to understand that if you were looking at the non-hybrid version, you're gonna be dropping down to a 1.5 liter turbo engine versus this two liter, and you will be putting out 192 horsepower. So just some differences as we look at the trim level right below this, this is a non-hybrid, or as you continue up, all the remainder of them will be hybrids just like this one. All right, guys, so when it comes to what's underneath the hood, it's always good to understand, of course, what's under the hood, which I mentioned, 204 horsepower coming out of this two liter engine or 192 horsepower coming out of that 1.5, depending on which trim level you're looking at. But I want you to know how this car stacks up to other makes and models out there in the world. So I'm gonna throw that up on the screen so you can see kind of where this car lives compared to other hybrids. After you've taken a look at that, we'll talk about some gas mileage. All right, guys, so I'm back here at the gas cap and I wanna to talk to you about miles per gallon. So this car gets 46 in the city and 41 on the highway. Now, if you're moving down to the EX or LX, which would be the models below, which are non-hybrids, you're looking at 29 in the city and 37 on the highway. So it's considerable, right? You're getting 17 extra miles per gallon in the hybrid on, on the city driving, and then you're getting four extra on the highway driving, which is really impressive because typically hybrids and non-hybrids, when you're on the highway, they're typically gonna drive using just standard gasoline and get about the same gas mileage. So this is improved on both sides of this. So now that you know the difference between the non-hybrid and the hybrid, I wanna throw a comparison up so you can understand how this car stacks up to other makes and other models out there in the hybrid world so that you can understand, hey, is this car worth it? Does it get the gas mileage that I want as I'm looking around? All right, guys, so before we go any further into this car talking about cargo space and leg space and all the dimensions and what's offered in the dash and all these changes in front of me that I'm looking at, I wanna give you a basic understanding of the trim levels and kind of what's above and below it and what are those differences. So in this vehicle now, is changed. There's an LX, which is your base, an EX, which is also down there, right? And these are gonna be non-hybrids. The Sport Hybrid, which is what we're sitting in right now, is the first hybrid option available to you. Above that is the Sport, or excuse me, the Hybrid EXL, and then there's a Sport L Hybrid, and then a Touring. So we got six different things here, but we're living right in the middle right now, right? So LX, EX, Sport Hybrid is where we're at on this vehicle. So this one is, I believe, 33, 445, which is what's on the sticker back there, and that's including the destination. You can drop down to that EX trim level, but you're giving up that hybrid. Now, I wanna say you're gonna be around the 30,000 and some change mark, right? Uh, probably closer to 31. Um, so understand that you can drop down. Now, if you do drop down, I wanna throw something up on the screen so you can understand, one, how much money you're gonna save, but also, what is the list of the amenities that I'm going to be giving up when I drop down. You know, I'm losing out on that deck lid spoiler. I'm giving up a wireless car play. I'm giving up the 19 inch alloy wheels, but what else is involved? Is it worth it to drop down, lose the gas mileage, that hybrid option and give these things up? Or do I wanna pay the, the money and buy this specific car? Now, now that you've looked at that, I wanna go the other way. If you were looking at the Sport Hybrid thinking, do I wanna jump up to the XL? Do I want the leather interior, right? Are there some options I want? I want you to see, hey, one, how much more is that vehicle gonna cost me? And then two, what is the additional list of items I'm gonna get if I pay that extra money? So you can take a look at that and kind of understand, hey, if I wanna spend a little bit more, what am I getting for my dollar, right? I know it's still gonna be a hybrid, but what extra amenities in the vehicle are there gonna be? And are those worth it to specifically you when you're looking? So now that you've taken a look and understand what's below, what's above, and kind of what that entails as far as costs, let's hop back in and start going over the trunk of the car. All right, guys, so here we are at the trunk of the car, and I wanna show you some of the differences, and then we'll pop it up and talk about what's in it. So first off, you can see the badging, right? And they brought this full line where the brake lights come across. So this is gonna be a different look. Now on the back of this, it is a sport, so they did give you the uh, the gloss look uh, deck lid spoiler, so understand that. And you have your standard badging, right? Anytime it's a hybrid, your sport accord and all of that. So a little bit different look to the back end of this vehicle. 
Now, when I pop it open, right, same thing, I can always throw my seats down. I've got a 60-40 split so I can pull these to release the seat. I've got my, my, my floor mats that come standard in the car. This is something the dealership has added uh, additionally. If you're looking for accessories, I can usually offer them to you if they're a little bit cheaper through Amazon since I do have an affiliate program. So I'll throw that link down in the description if you're looking for a, a trunk uh, like cargo carrier. Now underneath this, because it is a hybrid, it does not have a spare. Be aware of that. It has a tire repair kit. So that's what you're gonna see living right here. And you got some additional space that you can use. Now, lastly, you're gonna see this funnel. I talk about this funnel in pretty much every single one of the videos. If you don't know what it is, if you ever run out of gas, because this is capless now, there's a valve. You need to be able to hold that open to pour gas into it. That's what this funnel is for. It's gonna allow you to hold that open so that you can pour gas. That way, if you had a gas can, maybe you don't, maybe you had to fill up a water bottle or something odd, uh, you could hold this open to pour gas into it. So understand that's what this is for if you ever need it. So before we leave the trunk area of this car, I want you to understand how much space you've got in here. You have 16.7 cubic feet of space. What does that mean? What do most people means nothing, right? For a Ford or a hybrid, it's actually a lot of space. You used to have IMA batteries back here. That's where the hybrid battery lived, to where you couldn't store stuff. But now you've got this super deep well that you can use. So if you want to throw golf clubs, if you want to throw suitcases, uh, you know, whatever it is, you've got plenty of space to fit things in. But while we're here, I want to throw a comparison up on the screen so you can see how the cargo space of this vehicle stacks up to other makes and models out there in the world. After you've taken a look at that, we'll head into the back row and talk about leg space and just the amenities that you'll find back there. All right guys, so here I am in the back seat of this Honda Accord, which is super spacious, but immediately I noticed two things that I'm going, what? Uh, so I'm gonna pull you in and then I'll explain what those two items are. So the first thing is I wanna point out that you have 40.8 inches of leg space back here. So I have got plenty of room. I set this up for myself while I was sitting up there and I mean, I've got plenty of room in the back of this car. So you can see that you've got quite a bit of space. Now coming through the back of the interior, you've got almost like a black denim finish to it, right? It's kind of this like denim jean look uh, with a center stripe and then a standard black. So two tone as far as the materials with a little bit. So kind of an interesting look. I'm not sure how I feel about it or not. I think about sun and fading and this won't show as well, which I do like, uh, but just kind of an interesting look to that. And then you've got, you know, your normal stuff, your flip down here with your cup holders. Uh, and then coming across, uh, you know, you've got a different finish here and then all black across here and black across the top. So this is very uniform and nice. They don't have like cheap glossy looks or anything like that. Everything is kind of a matte finish to it. So much appreciated there. Now you've got one pocket here and then in standard fashion, they never give you the pocket. I'm sure there's reason, but I'll never understand what it is. But this is where things get weird. Look right here, what is going on? They don't have back air vents in this Accord. So I don't know if that's, you have to jump up a particular trim level. I'll, I'll, I'll do some research and throw it up on the screen so you can understand. But not having those in Texas where I'm at in Austin, it's hot today and it's not even like real summer yet and I'm having to crank it up up front. So that's a no-no for sure in a car this size when the cabin's getting a little bit bigger and there's no USBs, no, no, no USBs in the back. So I'll also find out, hey, what trim levels are gonna have those USBs in the back? What do I have to go up or is there something I can do as an add-on or kind of what are my options? But when I initially get in the back seat, the first two things I notice are no USBs and no air vents back here, which is wild to me. So before I leave this back seat, lacking a couple things, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I do wanna do a comparison so you can understand leg space in the back of this car versus other makes and models out there. So I'm gonna throw that comparison up on the screen so you can understand, hey, if I'm looking at second row, I'm thinking about kids or kids that are growing, are they gonna have the space in the back compared to other vehicles out there? Take a look at that and then we will hop into the front seat, and talk about leg space and all the amenities up there as well. All right guys, so here I am in the front seat of this vehicle and as you can see, the materials are that same kind of finish. I've got almost like a black denim finish with a stripe down the middle and of course cloth, right? If you wanna get that leather interior, you're gonna to wanna to jump up to that EXL, the next model above this. But before we start turning around and looking at you know the center stack and the dash and the 12 inch touchscreen and some of the changes that they've made as far as the software, I wanna to talk to you about leg space up here. I have got ridiculous amounts. You could easily be some somebody who's probably closer to 6'5", I would bet, and still have plenty of leg space, and I can still take this thing back, right? So you've got quite a bit of space in the front of this car. So 42.3 inches of leg space in the front end of this vehicle. I'll throw a comparison up on the screen so you can see how this car stacks up to other makes and models out there in the world, so you can understand. And then from a width-wise, I'm not, I'm not suffering either. I know some cars you get into that right leg kind of bumps into stuff. I've got a good amount of space, even though it seems like they've widened out the center stack in this car now. 
uh, I've still got a reasonable amount of space that I can work with uh, inside the vehicle. So after you've taken a look at that, let's kind of work our way through the dash and look at a couple different things, ergonomics and changes they've made. All right, guys, so the materials that we already talked about and kind of the same theme in the back, uh, that kind of black denim finish with the stripe and then the, uh, the solid tones, you've got the leather here, the leather here on the shifter and the steering wheel, of course, that's indicative of sports over the last few years. Uh, coming across kind of an all matte finish, they've gone to what the Civic start in this one long piece here. So it's a little bit more uniform, which I do like. Uh, and then you just control your air vents, aim and everything. So a very clean look, right? So less is more as far as buttons is what they've started to do here, which is really actually a nice look. Now down here, I've got two USB C's, which ah, I'm still, you know, I like regular USB wires. That's what I've got, but no big deal. Uh, you've at least got them, right? I've got my center console here with two cup holders, my shifter, uh, my drive modes, my electric uh, button, same thing you'd find in any of the previous generation as far as my, uh, my hybrids go, my parking brake and my brake hold. So these are all pretty standard stuff as far as what you'd find, and then my center console. So easy enough to understand. When I come across here, I've got all my normal stuff that you'd find, your, your mirror controls, uh, door locks, window locks, and then my auto up down windows. So let's talk about the steering wheel and the touchscreen. Okay, so here we are and we're looking at this steering wheel. Not much has changed from the previous generation. Over here is how I scroll through my menu, which I will say back there, I have a full digital display, which is nice looking. And we're gonna go over that in a second. My volume controls, my voice command button, jumping tracks, and then on the other side, I'm gonna have uh, my cruise control, which is adaptive, uh, allowing you to control not only adaptive, so I can set my speed, the car in front, in front of me, it'll bounce the, uh, the radar off of it and know to slow the car down until I get out and around it and then it can take me back up to my speed. Uh, and then lane keep assist, this button right here, if I engage this button, it'll drop in some, some lines on there so you'll know. And what it's doing is it's using the camera up here to detect the lines on the road. So if I drift to the left or right out of my lane, it'll actually correct for me and keep me centered. So this stuff is all pretty standard. It's been in the car the last few years. So let's talk about this display that we're seeing in here though, because this is actually super nice looking. So if I'm scrolling through here, all my different options, right? Phone, FM, AM. I don't think I need to explain those too much. USB, if you want to plug a USB in uh, with a bunch of music stored to it, you absolutely can. Bluetooth, we all understand how that works. I believe you get up to six uh, devices to connect. Uh, smartphone, it does have wireless CarPlay in this vehicle, so kind of a nice option. And then customize and display, if you wanna remove certain options because you don't ever use them, you absolutely can, right? So very easy to flip through this, jump into something, uh, and then it of course pull it up on the, the display over here. So if I jump over to the audio, boom, you're seeing uh, my FM, right? It pulls up. On the other side of this is where you're gonna see that range, tack, all of that additional information. So really nice to have that stuff over there. And how I'm adjusting that is gonna be right up this side. They've given you a scroll uh, as well, which is kind of nice. I like that they've done that. It really cleans up the display and the look. So vehicle stability assist, that's currently turned off, but what that is, is it works with traction control. So in the event that you go into a skid, it can help transfer power to whichever wheel is getting better traction. Uh, as we come through your brightness setting, everybody knows that if you just want a blank screen, uh, safety support. So this is where I can jump into some of those Honda safety, uh, that Honda safety suite, right? So this is gonna be my road departure mitigation. Much like lane keep assist, if I start to drift off the side of the road, this will actually uh, vibrate the steering wheel and give me an audible alert to let me know, hey, you're driving off the side of the road. So kind of if you're getting uh, maybe a little drowsy, right? Uh, you do have blind spot information system. So in your mirrors, you're gonna have those icons and you can see them right there. I'll point to it. It'll light up if somebody's there and if you start to get over, it'll actually uh, give you an audible alert as well to let you know. Uh, you do have collision mitigation braking, which is right underneath that. Uh, so in the event it's looking like I'm gonna rear in another car, it would be an audible alert. If I don't stop, it can actually apply the brakes to help prevent that accident. So the same piece of technology it's using for that adapter cruise control, right? And, and then, you know, I jump back to the beginning, right? So kind of nice that I can get into this stuff nice and easy when I'm looking around. Um, so let's jump back out of this uh, and keep kind of going down here. No content, we already went through brightness, vehicle spill assist, gauge display settings. Same thing, I can kind of eliminate some things. Power flow, it's cool that you can get that here I as well as on the touchscreen. And what that's gonna do is as you're driving, it'll actually show you, which I'll pull this up, uh, which mode you're driving in. It'll, it'll show you hybrid or strictly electric or gasoline. You'll see it kind of connect the two as you're going. So it gives you a better understanding of what modes it uses as you're going. So it's cool that you can get this in two different places. Uh, so I really do like that. I think it really helps people out your range fuel saw your you know trip a trip b all of that stuff uh speed and time same thing if you're really monitoring your driving your gas mileage those sort of things know that you have all that here uh this car does have apple carplay and, and uh, android auto which is wireless so you of course have the option uh to use anything related to navigation inside of the vehicle so if you want to pull those up you can take advantage of them and you of course do have a compass here which is something that they took away for a long time but have brought them back uh, driver attention monitor, I'm not gonna go over that much, but if you're using all these features at a point, it'll start to alert you just to make sure you're paying attention. They added this a couple years ago. You can see that I am not wearing my seatbelt right now. It's displaying it on the screen. It's cool if you got little ones in the back to let you know. 
Uh, and then maintenance, you know, it'll throw up codes and let you know when you're due for changes. And it'll give you the code that you can Google and it'll actually tell you exactly what they're gonna recommend to you. So you can go in kind of already knowing. So display here, super sweet. I love what they've done. They've simplified it. It's nice and clean. I can jump through different things on different sides. Very good look. This is a very nice change that they've made. Okay, guys, so this is the 12.3 inch touchscreen that you're getting. So that's one of those amenities you're getting when you jump up to this model. And I just wanna walk you through and kind of talk about some different things. The first thing I wanna show you is that I've got a split screen look going here, which is pretty nice. Uh, you could find this happening in other vehicles prior to this. Uh, Kia, I did a, a review on that did something like this. Super cool that you can do this now. So I really like that they're giving you those options to take advantage of. Now, as we're looking across your phone, accessing Bluetooth, we all kind of know how that works at this point, accessing your contacts, making calls, that sort of thing. If you've never connected one up, uh, you can prompt you, and then yeah, you go from there and connect up your device. FM and AM, you do have, uh, I want to say, um, your HD stations. So it's going to give you some additional stations if you're still listening to the radio. Take advantage of this if you want. Uh, Bluetooth audio, we are understand if you connect it up, you can stream music off of your phone. Your smartphone projection is exactly what you think it is as far as projecting uh, your phone up onto the screen. Uh, and then Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, that's going to play a role into this as well. Power flow, we talked about. So this is where it's showing you what mode you're driving in and this is on the go So it'll change as you drive so when the car fires up and it's starting to use gasoline You'll see the uh, the, the indicator going from the wheels to the get the engine versus the battery in the back So very cool to keep an eye on this uh, as far as understanding that trip a and trip B I think we all understand how that works USBs I mentioned it earlier you could plug in a USB uh, with stored music on it and be able to pull that off and listen to it Jump over and go over to the next screen. This is where things have gotten really cool I was looking at this earlier. It's like vehicle settings when I pull this up a beautiful display now. So when I jump into something, and go, okay, I wanna talk about lighting setup. Okay, well, maybe I'm thinking interior lighting. It's changing the display as we do to show you what's actually gonna change. Really cool that it does this. I can't explain how nice this is because when I was explaining features like this, uh, you know, years ago when they didn't offer this, it was hard for people to understand what these things meant. So they have made changes here that are really clean. Uh, keyless access setup, understanding, hey, I want the lights to flash or not flash. Uh, turn them off, turn them on. They've really helped you understand, giving you descriptors of what, what that function is, and even showing you display imagery is super helpful. So understand that they have cleaned this up a lot, made some changes, and I think it is really helpful to understand if, hey, if I wanna jump into like my door setup, let me get over here, uh, and say, hey, when I uh, when I unlock the doors, I want it to do just the driver's door versus, hey, I want it to do all the doors, right? Or when I'm getting out of the car, when I shift to park, it'll then unlock the remaining doors of the car. Like it's even showing you on the screen what that means, right? Shift to park, then it, then it does it, right? So just really cool the way they've set this up now to give you the explanation, but also show you, because a lot of people are visual people and they need to help understanding that. Things like walkaway auto lock, where when I leave the car, once I get out, I, I believe outside of a, a, a radius of about 10 to 15 feet, uh, if the key is with me, it'll automatically lock the doors of the car, right? So that feature is not default set on. So some really cool features in here that you can play with and take advantage of. So just want you to be aware that they have changed these menus to make them very user friendly. General settings is where I'm just getting to, hey, I want to connect something up to the car. I want to mess with the equalizer, stuff like that. The very basics of the car versus, hey, I want to change the way the car unlocks and locks and does different things like that. That's going to be vehicle settings. And then profile settings. This is super cool too. You can change your profiles, manage the profile as far as, you know, adding imagery and things like that. But what I really like, and I was looking at earlier, is in the drive modes. When you're in there, there are a couple different drive modes. So when I'm on my drive modes, there's a sport mode, right? And then I can go to an individual drive mode. What's really cool about this is I can actually pick in that drive mode, the individual mode, what I want it to change to, right? So individual settings down here, come to this, I can change the, the power, the steering, the, uh, you know, adaptive cruise, you know, driving in econ mode, the gauges. So I actually have a, a, a preference for myself outside of sport uh, and, and eco, right? So know that you can play with this, a really cool idea that they're saying, hey, let's make this a little bit more custom. You wanna change some of the settings and have your own like custom settings? Well, you can now. Uh, so understand that they've set that up for you. Um, so those are kind of the, the brief touch on some of the settings. Why hot, Wi-Fi hotspot, this car does come with 90 days free. And then afterwards, I, I wanna say it's $10 a month. Uh, I'll, I'll throw something up on the uh, the screen that, that tells you the website to go to, because uh, I just don't remember it offhand. Clock and wallpaper, we all understand that. Compass, we already talked about. Display mode, that's just your dimmer, right? Uh, and then coming across all apps, this is like the calculator, some of the remaining pieces. And you can turn things on and off here. So if you wanna say, hey man, I'm never gonna use AM, well, let me just 
just remove that button, right? I don't need to see that. So before we leave the touchscreen, I just want you to understand, I've connected up my phone, what Android Auto or Apple CarPlay would look like. And while I'm here, you can see that the car is idling now. So you can see what that power flow mode looks like. So I've connected up my phone. I jump into here. It's gonna show uh, my mapping just cause that's the general display. And you can see I've got a couple different options here. They've kind of boxed out. So kind of nice that they're doing that. I can jump over to Spotify, whatever I want to listen to and kind of toggle through my different options. So I've made it a very clean look, but I just wanted you to visually be able to see what this looks like when I'm on here as far as jumping around, playing with different stuff, and looking at what Apple CarPlay or Android Auto looks like on this screen. All right, guys, so we have now gone through the 2023 Honda Accord Sport Hybrid, which is what we are sitting in right now, which is about 33,445, including that destination charge, which everyone gets to pay, right? Uh, so I wanna go back through all of the different uh, comparisons that we did, and I'm gonna start you at the front of the car. First off, underneath the hood, you have a two liter engine putting out 204 horsepower. I'm gonna throw that comparison up so you can see how this car stacks up to others out there in the world. While that's up, I wanna remind you, if you drop down to the EX or the LX below this, it is a non-hybrid vehicle, and you're looking at 192 horsepower so understand those differences now while we're on that topic i want to talk about miles per gallon this car gets 46 in the city and 41 on the highway the non-hybrid gets 29 in the city and 30 i believe a seven uh as you're out there on the highway so you're looking at 17 additional miles per gallon uh in the city and an extra four when you are on the highway now i will remind you that when you go up to the exl i believe because you're changing out wheels and doing some different things it climbs even higher so i'll throw that up on the screen so you can understand what that is as far as mpgs there too i want you to know there's a little bit difference uh depending on the sport versus the non-sport uh, hybrids out there in the world now up in the front you have 42.3 or excuse me 42.3 inches of leg space in this car i've got tons of space i'm gonna throw that comparison up on the screen so you can see how this car stacks up to other makes and models out there in the world after you've talked and looked at this then we're gonna jump to that second row you have 40 point i think it was three inches of leg space in the back tons of space back there uh so i'll throw that comparison up while that comparison up i will remind you that you don't have ac vents back there and you don't have usbs which i don't like uh you've just got the two up here which is kind of a eh, not not a big fan of that uh and then jumping into the cargo space of the vehicle you've got 16.7 cubic feet of space back there tons of space in in the trunk so unlike older hybrids when the battery is back there and it blocked off part of the trunk and your, your trunk space was considerably smaller they have solved that issue now you have tons of space in the trunk of this vehicle so all around great car my big knocks on this car are clearly right here i want ac vents in the back i live in texas i want usbs back there because chances are we're commuting in this car we're going to be driving at places it gets good gas mileage the positives of this car that they have changed 12.3 uh, inch touchscreen, very clean look. I like that it's nice and wide. It has the multiple displays where I can see two things at once. And then right in front of me, the full digital display in the dash is superb. I love being able to control the right side, the left side, it's just all digital. It's clean, it's nice. It is a very good upgrade. I would love to see this come across the entire Honda line. So for those reasons, I do like this car and the reasons that I don't like this car. Uh, hopefully that helped out. Uh, lastly, before we go, I just want to revisit really quickly. Hey, if I'm dropping down to that EX model, how much money do I save and what items am I giving up? So I'm throwing that up on the screen. And then after that, let's talk about reversing that. If I'm in the sport hybrid right now and I want to go up to that EXL hybrid above me, how much more is it going to cost me? And what is the list of items that I'm going to gain, right? For paying that additional money. So now that you've seen that, fantastic. So a couple favors to ask from you. One, I hope you press that like button because you appreciate what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Two, I hope you'll leave a comment if you feel like I've missed something, if you have questions. Uh, there's plenty of people that are always checking this and we're all kind of talking together so it is a forum to ask questions that's what we're there for and of course i hope you share the video if you found the way that i presented it uh in a way that is helpful hopefully you will share it with others outside of that i hope you subscribe to the channel so like comment subscribe all the things let it go